All right. We are still in our Pentecost teaching series. And so we're going to just walk through the scripture and see what the Lord would say to us tonight. Amen. <clears throat> and the word of God declares to us in Acts chapter number three. Um, we'll start reading at verse number one and just end up where we're going to end up. Amen. Let's do it like that. All right. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his, ankle, his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And when they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel who marvel ye at this. Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, this is verse 15, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom ye see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all so far the text all right acts chapter three occurs subsequently after um, what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, which is um, the day of Pentecost itself. Um, so when the when the Holy Ghost came, he said in chapter number one that we would receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon us and that he would make us witnesses. Un, he said, in the scripture says, unto me, but the translation basically means I will make you a witness of me. Or in other words, when you witness, you are testifying about something that I have done, or in one way or another, your testimony routes back to me, me being Christ. So in chapter number three, what we are seeing here is Peter and John, who are two of the 12 disciples, they are at the beginnings, um, if you will, of their public ministry. Now, in chapter number two, um, of course, uh, Paul talks about how this phenomena called the Holy Spirit is the, the fulfillment of a promise or prophecy that was spoken by Joel. He alludes to that in verse number 16 of chapter number two. And so if you keep reading down, uh, they talk about the determinant and the foreknowledge of God. Talk about he loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it, which is true. The Lord said that he was going to destroy a temple and then he did it. He said, give me three days to break down this whole house and I'm going to raise it right back up. And then he did it. Um, verse number 32. This Jesus God hath raised up wherefore we are all witnesses. Again, uniting them together, the disciples, for the purposes of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, which would then draw hearts unto him. And here we go, starting in verse number 37. Uh, is the message of the kingdom. Verse number 38 is really where he drives his message. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
So in essence, what Peter is alluding to, now mind you, he is having another inspired moment or the spirit of the Lord is moving upon him. And so Peter makes this prophetic announcement about how to enter into uh, the kingdom of God. And he says, first off, it's that you have to repent. Okay, that prefix re means again or to do a thing again. That compound word, pent, repent. So what he is, okay, there we go. So what he's saying there in verse number 38 is that you have to, again, bring your mind into the pent, pent, Pentecost. Bring your mind into the spirit of God and allow for him to subsequently disciple you according to that which the Lord has already instructed his disciples. I'll give you just a quick second to catch up there. He says, repent. Okay, or again, bring your mind, aggressively discipline your mind according to the spirit. So notice, Nyla, how he's not even talking about natural things that we can do to discipline our mind or to cause for our mind to return to thinking about those things that concern the Lord. He says here in verse number 38 that we must repent and be baptized. It's interesting that he gives that compound instruction to repent, which is more than just saying, God, I'm sorry. But repentance is about the turning away from a certain thought or a track of thinking. Yes, amen. So let me stop right there and just drop this little pen and help everybody in the room. So you do realize that it is a sin for you to curse anything that God has blessed. Mm -hmm. In creation, after God established the heavens, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. He has some more dirt. So he took that dirt, made a man. At the end of creation, he stopped and looked at everything he made and he blessed it and said that it was good. Which then means that he placed his seal of approval upon it and declared that his that the created thing measured up to God's standard of creation. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are a part of what he created from dirt. So it is not profitable for us to curse the thing that God has created and blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yea, even I was created for thine pleasure. Mm -hmm. Let me help you. You have to be incredibly cautious about the words that you speak concerning you. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Because who else is responsible for making sure that your temple remains the temple of the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says in Corinthians. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the spirit of God dwells in you. Mm -hmm. And so to speak negatively concerning oneself is more than just speaking against the creation of God, but it also curses the wisdom of God. He's so wise that he already foreknew how best to bring you into relationship with him and disciple you and then subsequently seat you and send you for the purposes of ministry. And he did it with his spirit living down in your heart the whole time. And so here's why you can't curse your own destiny. Because the Lord himself lives in you. 
And then. Wasn't it Job's wife that said, why don't you just curse the Lord and die? Right. Yep. Okay. Yes. Sips yep. tea, literally. <laughs> Go ahead. So going back to Acts, yeah. Peter says, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Let me make this statement real quick right here, because Acts 2 and 38, in some religious circles, they will beat you over the head with this one particular verse and say, if you do not meet every qualification in verse number 38, literally, that you do not have God and you do not deserve heaven and you are going straight to hell when you die. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yeah. but being baptized in the name or someone saying, I baptize you in Jesus name is not the determining factor about me entering into heaven or not right that's amen what i read in my bible is he would kick me out of heaven if i came to him and i was a stranger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we can't right. we can't teach verse 38 as an absolute truth because he's not literally talking about being baptized in Jesus' name, but rather in the way of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You have to consider the fact that it's the life that Jesus was poised to live before God. That's the reason why the Father said that all power in heaven and in earth has been given to him. And so your baptism is one method in which you are... Um, invited into the fellowship of his suffering and subsequently the fellowship of his resurrection. In other words, this is how it works, Nyla. We can't get his power if we don't use his method. Mm -hmm. We can't get to his results if we don't go his way. Right. Amen. I like that. We can't. And unfortunately, there are very many that are trying to use the authority and the power of God, but it don't work. Because there's something, some key ingredient, some element that's missing from this equation about how we enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got to be in him in order to have that power. <laughs> Teach this class. Because that's exactly the answer. In him do we live and we move and we have our being. So the very essence of who I am is predicated upon who he is, or rather it's determined by who he is. Mm -hmm. So then I also want you to put this in your notes because we got to have another conversation concerning the kingdom of God. Because chapter three in Acts won't make sense until we make this little quick pivot. All right. So when we talk about the kingdom of God, we're not speaking of a physical place. We're speaking of a reality that influences the place that we live or where we are sent. That influences the place that we live and what was the rest of that? Or where we are sent. Okay. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is God's idea of government. Mm -hmm. Not government in terms of political office necessarily, mm -hmm. but rather the kingdom is God's method through which he controls and administrates the world mm -hmm. yeah. amen okay so if the kingdom is his idea of how to govern a thing. 
it then stands to reason that because this is his approved and his authenticated method, it then stands to reason that he would use the kingdom in a much larger context because his position is to captivate the hearts of humanity. Not just the nation of America, not just the nation of Mexico, not the country of Africa. He wants everybody. Amen. Black, white, Chinese, Chinese Puerto Rican, Hawaiian, mm -hmm. nonverbal, everybody. Everybody. Oh, and let me help you real quick. <laughs> Guess what else he loves and he wants to say? Trans, binary, gay, lesbian, all the above. Addicted. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Crackhead, drug addict, prostitute, everybody. Yes. Yes. His yep. blood does not discriminate. We do. Yes. The rest, the yes. rest like me. Amen. There is no qualification for his blood. And neither do we read anywhere in the scripture where he has specifications about who is a benefactor of his blood. Mm -hmm. To them that, okay, to them that believed, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter who shows up in his kingdom. Everybody's going to be transformed. Right. Thank Amen. You, how can you how can you enter into the kingdom of God? You must be born again. Must be well, how can a man be born twice? He says huh? you must be born of the water and born of the spirit. He's not talking about you coming out of your mother's womb twice. He's talking about another type of baptism, another type of invitation into a different nature. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, and that's what I love about this teaching with the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is trying to reach absolutely everybody at the same time. Right. right. That's how intelligent he is. Mm -hmm. So wonderful he is that he knows exactly how to cater your meal to you to get your heart. The same as he knows how to cater it to my heart to get what he wants from me. Mm -hmm. So God is not trying to reach hearts and reach souls to plug them into a church necessarily. But to bring into his kingdom. Into yes. Yes. Into his kingdom. Yes. Because the kingdom encompasses all things that are spiritual. The Bible says that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Mm -hmm. So at no point is God leaving you ill-equipped or ill-prepared. For whatever it is that he's trying to send you into. Right. He'll never do that. Yeah, he's not, he's not doing that. Mm -mm. Y'all give me one second. You're good. Grandma. So he can I, I'm teaching Bible study. Can you give me about 40 minutes and I will call you right back, please? Okay, I will call you as soon as I'm done with Bible study. All right. Aw. <laughs> no, because I know she's calling to pray and her prayers are not quick. Y'all see where I get it from? I, I should have told her to pray. She'll take us smooth on in. That, that is so sweet. That's oh, where my family gets that prayer mantle from. It's from my grandmother. One night we should do that. Beautiful. Oh, she, she will. Trust me. <laughs> All right. So God is not trying to plug people into a church. He wants them to be in his kingdom. Because to plug, to, to plug people into a church is to continue this idea 
that having engagement with God is, oh, no, that ain't going to work. Lord, give me how you want me to say this, because that would came out all kinds of wrong. All right. So to, to plug people into a church is to limit from the beginning how they see God. Because the church is the ecclesia. And that word literally means called out ones. Those that he has called from darkness into his light. Mm -hmm. What was that you said? Because the church is the ecclesia? Uh-huh. E e k k l e s i a, I believe e that's how it's And that means what again? Called out ones. Called out ones. Amen. So, from the perspective of God. He's always plugging people into his kingdom because in the kingdom, there's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the church, there's simply opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, In the kingdom, there is responsibility. But in the church, there is opportunity. It's so true. Mm -hmm. So true. Because the kingdom associates itself with government. It runs like a government. It runs like a nation. So, so safe. So there's a different way that he has to administrate the kingdom versus the church because of what the kingdom is positioned to accomplish. And the kingdom would serve as the foundation for how the world has built every system. This whole concept of a kingdom, even that term itself originates in God. But look at how every nation subsequently has built their governmental infrastructure. They build it like a kingdom where there is a king or there is a senior statesman or a senior head of state that is positioned to protect the integrity of the nation or of the citizens of the nation itself. Mm -hmm. I never thought and that. even, huh? I never thought of that. It, that's right. And even though he sits as the king or as the sovereign of this nation, the way that he expands his nation is through the citizens of the nation. But the difference is in the kingdom, everybody has the same access because everybody, to some degree, has the same responsibility. Whereas in the church, because it is an institute that falls secondarily in nature to God's kingdom, people will treat it as such. Hmm. And so they'll take the idea of the kingdom and try and force it to work in the church. Mm -hmm. Hence why you have bad leadership that mm -hmm. wants to lord over people mm -hmm. as if that individual is the sovereign of a nation. Yeah. 
sitting at the supreme seat of leadership for a political system is different than you serving as a leader in the house of God. Yes. They are different. Mm -hmm. The responsibilities, they're different. Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's one kingdom that influences the entire world. Right. One king that governs all of humanity. Mm -hmm. However, there are multiple churches that exist within the context of this one kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because from God's perspective, the church would be like a microcosm or a, a smaller perfect. It, it would be a smaller um, application, if you will, of the kingdom. It would, it would, it would mirror the kingdom. It would look like the kingdom. Everybody. But people would understand their rank and their file and the difference between kingdom and church. Mm -hmm. Because the kingdom is the legislative branch of God. And the church deals with all of the matters subsequently related to personnel. Or titles. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, Brenda. Because I do know there are some leaders in a church that do force their whatever is on the people they Correct. they really do correct and it's different it's different when you are trying to uh, it's one thing when you're leading someone right here's here's the thing here's the thing different yeah. actions determine different responses from different animals. Yep. Yep. You don't just saddle a horse, sit down, and kick it. <laughs> that horse will stomp you. <laughs> yeah. But if you learn how to navigate this particular animal <laughs> using the tools and utensils that are given, right. The probability that you will have success in getting to where you need to increases yes, significantly. More like yes. <laughs> because you don't use the tool or the instrument outside of the context in which we know that it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to. Okay, where are we at? Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, I got way, way too many browsers open. Um, Take your go. time, you'll get it. All right, very quickly, turn to Romans 14. And jump down for me to verse, let's look at 15. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy Oh, what's that last little clause say? In the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. For he, for he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. 
It's a whole lot you can say in them four verses, but I'm going to sum it up like this. The Holy Ghost doesn't make you be mean. The Holy Ghost does make you be concerned about others. The Holy Ghost makes you make sure that your intentions are not polluted or perverted. And the Holy Ghost will tell you when they are. Because Amen. the Holy Ghost is the agent that introduces and subsequently orientates people into the kingdom of the Lord. He helps people become acclimated with how to live in the kingdom, okay? Because it's a kingdom and not a church. There, there are certain protocols and behaviors that are that are becoming of a kingdom citizen. There, there, there is a certain caliber, a certain class that you carry about yourself because you understand that you are an ambassador of a sovereign nation. Mm -hmm. you, you, you begin to understand that the seat in which you occupy has more influence in the lives of people than what you may give yourself credit for and or what you may be privy to. Because when you're seated in the kingdom, you understand that I represent a king. All day. And in mm. front of angels and aware. And the thing about this particular king is although he is a sovereign and his kingdom is a sovereign nation, meaning it's, it's ruled by one ruler. Okay, it's a sovereign ruled by one ruler. All right. So even though he's a sovereign and he's the ruler of a sovereign nation, this sovereign nation serves to impact every other that will ever exist throughout eternity. Turn very quickly with me to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter nine and verse seven. And I'm gonna read it, I'll read it for you. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So basically, it is impossible for the kingdom to ever diminish in size, capacity, power, or influence. It will never diminish in size, capacity, power, nor influence. He says it very plainly and expressly there in that second clause of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. It's impossible for the kingdom expansion to end. It will not. Mm -hmm. And that was Isaiah 9 what? Nine and seven. Nine and seven. Okay. Put this in your notes also. Revelation 11 and 15. 11, 15. And that book is Revelation, not plural. There ain't no S on there. Oh, exactly. Yeah, he had <laughs> one. the whole book is one moment and one revelation from God. One yeah. revelation. It just took him forever to explain it but it is literally one moment mm -hmm. all right so uh revelation chapter 11 and verse number 15 the word of god declares and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom of this world 
kingdom, rather kingdoms, plural, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So here in Revelation, Paul is talking about how there are multiple kingdoms that exist in one world. But God has positioned the Christ as being seated a little, a little, okay, we, we are seated a little bit lower than the angels. And he has given Christ a name that is above oh. earth. You got to see this governmental rank. He's a king, okay? So he's not talking about church positions and church seats and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. He's talking about places, positions, and seats of authority. So he's the sovereign. His second in command is the Christ. Then comes us, then his angels. He has a structure and he has an order to this kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because everything in the kingdom has power and it has influence. So the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. It's that last phrase there, and he shall reign forever and ever. It almost, in a sense, mirrors with what we just read in Isaiah. How Isaiah said that to the increase of the government, there is no end. So if it's impossible for his government to end, that must mean then that he's going to reign forever and ever. Right. Amen. We're, there's no leadership change that's about to happen. He's yes. staying Amen. on the throne yes. for all of eternity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So the Holy Ghost is the agents of God that helps to facilitate our introduction into all things kingdom. Because think of it like this. He is a sovereign and his kingdom is a sovereign nation, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, but up until the point that he teaches us how to live under the authority of one king, one ruler, and one voice, we will always be a dictatorship. Hmm. I'm going to stop right there and let you catch up on your notes. Because until you come to the point where he is the sole voice and the sole authority that you heed, there will always be others that are vying for your attention and your allegiance. Mm -mm. Bible says it like this, Mother Allen. He said, you can't serve two masters. Nope. You will love one and you will hate the other. Hate the other. So That's until it. we come to the point where we learn how to live with the one, we will always be in competition between the two. Mm. And mm. so one, guaranteed at least one, more than likely, both of them are trying to dictate to you what you should do, how you should live, how you should occupy yourself. Mm -hmm. According Whereas in this kingdom, there is one ruler, the sovereign. The sovereign. Not Amen. Amen. Bring all all power. <laughs> so we good so far? Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. Okay. Anybody have any questions? We need clarity on anything. Some anything we need to go back and 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 touch on again. Okay. Now all of that is going to help us to explain Acts chapter three because you being ooh. Let me let me make another bold <laughs> statement. All right. Let me let me just help everybody tonight. We're gonna kick over all these religious cows. Amen. <laughs> Matter of fact, I can do it with a scripture. Don't let your phone. Amen, amen. Mm, this is so good. 
Go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five. And we're going to start at verse number 17. Now, I quote this just about every Sunday, so y'all should readily recognize that. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5, starting at 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. Stop right there. What was that word? What was that word right there that we just read? Be in Christ. He is a new creature. creature. Okay. And not a person right not a minister not an elder not a prophet not a missionary not a sister not a none of that if you are in Christ you are a new creature new creature meaning then that that creative process that we read about in Genesis no longer is quarantine to time past. Mm -hmm. But when you are seated in the nature of Christ, he forms out of you a new creature, a new type of being. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Here's where it gets real good and juicy. And hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So God has called you to a ministry. And it is called the ministry of reconciliation. And you want to know why? Because every one of us has been reconciled into his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every one of us, prior to the time when we accepted and subsequently submitted ourselves to the sovereign, we lived in a dictatorship. And the Holy Ghost had to come upon an individual and divinely use them to help usher us into his kingdom and then teach us what it means to live as a citizen of his kingdom and not just be connected to a church that says it's his church. Church is shut down. When does the kingdom ever close? Never. Uh, that's that's it. It. That's true. Amen. <laughs> so hence why God is not concerned with plugging people into a church as he is plugging people into his kingdom. Amen. Because the, uh, the idea in the kingdom is that that life cycle of regeneration would repeat itself. Every person who has been reconciled then reconciles another, and then you reconcile another, and then you reconcile another, because he's given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And my Bible tells me that he cannot come down until we all come into the unity and the knowledge of the spirit and his faith. Hmm. See, a church is concerned with making sure that you hear about him. The kingdom wants to make sure that you become him. I'm not talking about you replacing him. But all that he is, you tap into God and such that all that was in Christ comes alive in you. The difference between the church and the kingdom. So he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation.
Thank you. Uh, give me one second here. I need to pull up a definition. I was gonna say, give us the definition of reconciliation. That's I, just well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kind of know what it means, but yes, I want the definition of it. Thank you, Pastor. I got you. I got you. But I'm pulling it from, from a biblical uh, dictionary. Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is so good. <laughs> I know it is. Y'all give me 15 minutes. I promise we're going to be done. Can I have 15, please? It's okay. As long right. as it takes. So the definition for reconciliation, number one, it means exchange. Adjustment. Restoration, and here's my favorite atonement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Atonement. What do we say? Exchange. Adjustment. Yeah, exchange, adjustment, restoration, atonement. So look at that, look at the word atonement. It, it's a compound word. And I'm 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 gonna say I'm gonna say it differently. And I think that's gonna help you to grasp it. So instead of instead of calling it atonement. We're going to call it at one mint. At one what? At one mint. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Oh, okay. Atonement is what Jesus makes for us through the sacrifice of his life. Where he teaches us what it means to live and exist as one with God and his Christ. He teaches us what it means to live as one with God and his Christ. The words of Jesus. Amen. He says, Father, make them one as we are one. He has given to us the kind of ministry that exists to bring people back from living in scattered places in pieces mm. to living as one with God and his Christ. Mm -hmm. And that is given to every man. Every man. Black, white, Chinese, Puerto Rican, Indian, uh, Pakistani, Botanese, <laughs> Tanzanian, British, Canadian, <laughs> whoever. Whoever. Um, Purple, ever. orange, green, blue, whatever pigment that you want to tattoo your skin today, guess what? He has still called you to the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. That reminded me of that song, Brown and Yellow, Black and White. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so because we understand that he has called us to reconciliation, 
we can then plug ourselves into Acts chapter number three. Because what we see here is Peter and John were going to the temple of the Lord. They were going to church to go pray. On their way to pray, they come across a man that, uh, as the Bible says, was lame from his mother's womb. So he was born with a limp. He could not walk from birth. So all that he has known is another type of living that is beneath his purpose and the promise of God. <clears throat> he was born, this man was born into adverse situations and adverse conditions that do not line up with what the government of heaven says should be the standard <clears throat> of his life, or standard for his life. So this man was born with a limp. He, he was born unable to walk. And every day they would lay this man, common folk would literally place him right outside of the gates to the to uh, that led him to the temple. And it was the gate called Beautiful. And he would literally just lay there begging for people all day long. He can't he can't walk, which means he can't work. Man don't work. He don't eat. So that's what he does every day. His occupation is to beg from people and hope that they will have pity or mercy upon him. Mm -hmm. Now, doesn't that sound like the state of the world as we know it? Yes. Not mm -hmm. necessarily mm -hmm. the part that's begging or wanting something, but the aspect that has no understanding or no clue of what all is available to us hmm. as citizens of a kingdom. Hmm. So homeboy is laying in his normal spot. Peter and John are on their way to go pray. Guess who they walk past on their way to prayer? This man that's laying there. He looks up at them, sees them coming. And from his perspective, he is expecting or anticipating that they are going to stop, acknowledge him and give him some money and then go on about their way. Mm -hmm. Peter and John look on this man <clears throat> peter then says to this man i have no silver and i have no gold <clears throat> but what i do have is the kingdom and because the kingdom is joy peace and righteousness in the holy ghost what I can look at and observe through the natural lens of my eye is that there is a lack of peace in your life. But let me help you. Such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Mm -hmm. The difference between the church and the kingdom is that the church wants to fill seats. The kingdom is trying to restore a people. Hmm. I had to hide myself because I didn't want to get no religious darts shot at me. Say that because again, please. Use that word, they use those words interchangeably and they are not the same. Say that again, please. The church, the church and the kingdom are not the same. The church wants to fill seats. The kingdom is concerned with restoring a people. So, that's good. Mm -hmm. So you can tell then that Pete, something has happened with Peter and John because what they give to this man is what he needs to enter into an abundant life. 
the kind of life that Jesus was sent to give to mankind. They bypass his physical condition. They bypass his ailment. And bring aggressively. Here's the thing. When God has it out for your life, you don't get the choice about whether you're going to come or not. It's a matter of when. Mm -hmm. And let me add another layer onto this. In the kingdom, so the kingdom of God if it were a place, if. So everybody say if. If. Okay, so y'all know I'm not saying that it's real. If it were a place, it would look just like Eden. Because that was the first place where God met with man. Hmm. And it was the place where God had established man to exercise his dominion and his authority. So if the kingdom, if we had to associate it with some type of a picture to give us an understanding, it would be Eden. So Peter and John are not concerned with helping this man to gain some sense of stability, but still live a diminished type of life. Remember, okay, Acts chapter number one, remember that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you and I will make you to be a witness of or unto me, okay? So what happens in chapter number three is that the sovereign of this nation not only equips, but then sends two of his ambassadors to restore to this one man the full measure of the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom, because it looks like heaven, there is no place for anything that is not God's standard to exist. In heaven, there's, the concept of sickness doesn't exist. Disease literally means that there is a dis-ease in life. <clears throat> and if God is trying to enter to get us to enter into peace, why would he then leave us in a place where we are diseased so we don't understand yeah. or can't even conceptualize peace? Right. So these two ambassadors introduce this lame man into the realities of the kingdom, which is anti everything that he was born into and subsequently forced to learn. Hmm. He learned how to be a beggar. Mm -hmm. Not because he chose that, that was what he was born into. But the beautiful thing about it is that the Lord doesn't leave him in that place. Mm -hmm. He literally restores to him the virtue that is missing from his life. So let me say it like this. We can't really say that it's the kingdom if we don't see certain attributes. Mm. Because the kingdom is always going to be anti-humanity. It's always going to be anti-limited experience. It's always going to be anti- uh, Now the Bible says we can have a form of godliness but deny the power. 
The kingdom wants the power. Mm -hmm. Peter and John, two of the two of the disciples of Jesus, two of his beloved apostles, they could have easily blessed the man who walked on. Could have easily given him a nice little cute prayer and walked on. But instead, what they did is interjected themselves into a moment to break the frequency of demonic communication that would tell this man that this is going to be your plot in life and you are going to die with this lie. Mm -hmm. The kingdom gives hope. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the church is guilty of giving a sentence. Mm. Sometimes we will banish people. Yep, don't look at me like that. Because mm -hmm. every person don't hear to speak in tongues, you done ran around somebody's church. Guarantee you done thought how you want to slap or choke somebody. And don't lie and say you haven't, because we all have. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of his glory. Mm -hmm. And guess what? His glory is not just his opinion about us. His glory is also his opinion about everyone else. He made them as well, didn't he? So why wouldn't he have an opinion about them also? He said sometimes the church will... It'll give people a sentence instead of a giving a sentence. Them. That's not yes. Yep. We'll play judge. Mm -hmm. We'll play God. Mm -hmm. And try and sentence people to living this diseased life. But we mm. say that we have the kingdom of God inside of us and we're filled with the Holy Ghost. How, Sway? How? How? How do yeah. you have the, the real Holy Ghost? But you are content with leaving someone in a decrepit state of living that you can clearly see is crippling him, not just physically, in his mind and in his spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the Lord places his spirit upon two of these ambassadors. And the Lord divinely orchestrates a meeting and a moment where they all can cross paths. And this one man can not only receive a miracle, he can be restored into the kingdom of God. Amen. So don't think of your life as casual, don't think of your life as happenstance. God has not called you to just be a, a member of a church. He has called you into his kingdom and his kingdom has responsibility attached with it. We need more than just the Holy Ghost. My prayer and my petition has been that we would have an understanding about who the king is. If we understand the king, we'll understand more about his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the king, <clears throat> the kingdom is only the operation of everything that the king is. Everything he is and everything he does, you see it in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So, your Holy Ghost yeah. will make you have concern for those that the world has sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. 
really, for example, um, like that lady that came into church um, on last Sunday. Well, you know, and of course, you know, like you said, there's probably a reason that she left, but forgive me, Lord, you know, I should, when she told me, you know, that she was struggling, I should have just stopped right there and said a prayer for her right there. You know, I just, we just welcomed her in and, you know, said, you know, like, you know, we hope you leave here differently than what you came, but you know, she ended up leaving. So, but we should, should have right then and there just said a prayer for her. And see, here's the thing. Nyla, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm so glad that you said that. <gasps> wow, it's so pretty. Let me, let me. Are we sleeping? Let me, let me, let me just make this statement. Let me just make this statement. This house, when, when it comes to me, you never have to wonder or worry if a moment of ministry is necessary. Mm -hmm. the lord has equipped me and i'm not saying this to be prideful the the lord has equipped me enough to be sensitive to him in that in that regard right and i don't expect that i'm the only one that he would use to help somebody right As i don't amen. read that in the bible that's not how i operate right amen because this church is not a dictatorship mm -hmm. amen it's not, it's God's church. And mm -hmm. he can anoint who he wants to whenever he wants to. Right. Now, am I saying that we just all get up and run amok and do all that? No. No. If everything's done decently in order, he, in he, order. he is a structurally, he's an orderly type of God. Yes. However, mm -hmm. do people have to wonder if we're going, mm. mm. we'll, <laughs> Will people ever have to wonder if they find safety or hope in FOLM? Will they be protected? And will we be integral with their truth? Mm -hmm. I don't ever want that to be a question. Mm -hmm. The answer to that should always be yes. Absolutely. And, you know, Pastor, I also want to say that sometimes, you know, I thank God when you might stop me from doing something. I mean, sometimes I, I know, like, you just got to be careful of, you know, if you're weak in a moment, you can't go, you know, be trying to pray and lay hands on somebody if you're weak as well, because you don't know what can attach to your spirit. Amen. And so I have to, I have to be mindful to, yes, I always want to help. And yes, I always want to be involved. And I just, you know, I just love helping people and loving people, but I got to remember, you know, sometimes when your spirit is weak, you need to get filled up first before you go and be doing other things too, as well. I mean, is, does that make sense, Pastor? Mm -hmm. Yep. And don't be afraid to call somebody else to help out. Why Why invite people to your house for a full course meal and your cupboards are empty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you have to serve them? Nah. Nah. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, the anointing is lifted. I had a whole good thought I was going to say, and I just lost it. So I know the anointing is lifted. <clears throat> Nonetheless, be guilty. You know what? Be guilty this week of offering prayer to someone that don't look like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Come what I have put on my notes. I'm sorry. Um, you good? Uh, I forgot where I wrote it. Oh, I have to do my part and help others. That's one thing I did get out of that. And I put that in my notes. However, he has given it to you. Yes. Yep. But this week, if this is Thursday, we got a couple of days until Sunday. And even then, ministry doesn't stop just because the day changes. Right. You can offer prayer to somebody. You can offer Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can offer words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. Let's be guilty of doing the small, what may appear to be small, but they are incredibly important things. 
to someone else. Yeah. Right. That's the one thing, like when I was working at the, um, at the college, you know, that's one thing I miss and that's, and Lord help me. I need to, when I get outside of my own home, you know, here and like go to the grocery store and stuff like that, I need to be more aware, be more like that. Like I was when I was at the college, you know, people, you know, they just came to me. I, you know, like they just came to me and talked to me, you know, so I always, I would just pray for them, you know? Nyla, I promise you, it happens to me at least once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. Where someone that is on one and, and and nine times out of ten, these be people that are not on my team. I am not their, they're not my direct report. Mm -hmm. These folk will find me, and, and a lot of time I'm like, wait a minute, okay, I know your face. What's your name? Mm -hmm. Or I just will happen to be walking past somebody, and it's like they got this look on the on their face, and I'm like, you all right? And me asking them that is what causes the waterworks. I'm like, oh, okay, hold on. Keisha, uh, Amy, somebody come cover this real quick. We need to go yeah. off and have a beating. We need, we need to go have a moment. Yep. Yeah. I cannot tell y'all the number of moments. That's why I call them a moment. <laughs> the moment. Amen. Right. Amy. I cannot tell you the number of moments that I've had in this building in the last 10 months I've been there. Because what I understand is that my response... Even though I may not be in a, in a place where I am liberated to preach the name of Jesus, it does right. not mean that my assignment is depleted. It does not Amen. mean that I have to minimize the impact that I can have in the life of a person. Amen. That's it. Just because I can't say his name doesn't mean that I wasn't sent with his authority. Exactly. Amen. Amen. I missed that feeling when I was a teacher. I used to help so many young kids. So wherever you are and whomever you are, God has given to you the ministry of reconciliation. And he being the sovereign and you being a citizen of his kingdom means then that he reserves the right to employ your divine service when he needs it. And then I thank God I had, had you guys on tonight while we were in the shop. And the young man that was sitting in my chair, I think he, he said, that sounds like my, that sounds like somebody I know. And he said, he knows Nyla. And I think he, it, he must be a nephew or something of yours, but he, he, you, you, if you could have heard him, he, he kept saying like, that's good. That's good information. So I'm grateful that, you know, normally I don't do that because, you know, you just never want to send people, you know, it's some, so, yeah, sometimes people that, you know, aren't believers or you just never know until you know, you introduce them to that or whatever, but I thank God that they got, and even the, the other two clients that were in their other chairs, they were like, where do you go to church? You know, that's, that's some good teaching right there. And I was like, amen. So it made me feel good to hear amen. that feedback. Like, amen. Uh, amen. Get more people, you know, just, yeah. So tonight I, I thank God for even the fasting and everything we're going through right now. It's like, just showing me an eye opening, like, mm -mm, girl, you ain't lost your power. <laughs> you ain't lost your power. <laughs> you got this, Demita. You got this, Sister Demita. Let me help you, Demita. Yes, sir. Romans 10 and 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. And how shall they hear without a preacher? It don't mean you pull a full sermon, but what it does mean is wherever his name is proclaimed, that becomes holy ground. Mm. Amen. And I'm sorry, but my God is my king. And wherever my king's name is becomes his kingdom. Amen. So I don't have to be in a church Amen. to have access to the king and to have a moment in his kingdom. Yes. We have access all day long. Pastor, that don't mean what? Said so that doesn't mean I ha I don't ha I don't have to wait until pe until we get to church to pray for people. I can be right. in Walmart, Amen. I can be in Dillon's, I can be in Dollar Tree, I can be in Dollar General. Right. Okay. Or we can be walking down the street. It don't matter. The Holy Ghost is not limited to a church building, neither a church experience. Amen. 
It is 8.30. Y'all, I said I was done 15 minutes ago. Stop talking. <laughs> it's okay. I want to get it's good now. <laughs> so you have more in you to do more than what you know. That's true. And my encouragement, let the king out of quarantine. Let the king be the king. Let him out them prison gates and them prison walls. Let God be God. Amen. 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 Very quickly, by way of announcements, tomorrow evening, uh, we are in prayer in the tabernacle at 7 p.m. So we're expecting Amen. to see as many faces, um, both in person, and we'll have Zoom going and all the good stuff. So no worries on that one. Thank you. Amen. I appreciate we'll have it. that going. Um, Sunday, 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 we're going to make a couple of changes to our order of service. Still praying on that for some clarity. I will, I will know by Sunday what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. And then Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. For those of you that want to hang out with Prophet, uh, we are going to be in fellowship with Overseer Roderick Houston and the Greater Harvest Tabernacle. He has asked me to come and preach their live at five service. So that's this Sunday at 5 p.m. Um, at the Greater Harvest Tabernacle. Oh, man. Where, where's that located, Pastor? <laughs> 60 something, something, something. East Coast. <laughs> he used to be the pastor of Mount Olive. Okay. He used, to, yeah, he used to be the pastor of Mount Olive, but their church is off of, it's uh, it's right off of 21st and Woodlawn. Okay. And, and I'll, I'll get all that address and stuff. And we'll shoot it out. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yeah, 5 o'clock Sunday. They're live. Okay, we'll, we'll post it to Facebook and all those other places. But those of you that want to hang out with the prophet on Sunday, we're going to be churching for a while. I have to be at work at noon 30, so I have to work from 2, 12 30 to maybe 4. But if I can get out of there on time, then. So I will be at Sunday school. I will be at church on Sunday, but I might have to leave this a little bit early. Okay. Understood. Mm -mm. Father, bless your people. I pray, God, that your angels of mercy and your angels of protection would cover them, that you would safeguard them, Lord, from everything that is seen. But more importantly, give us eyes to see what is hidden beyond the natural. God, that no heart, hurt, harm, or danger would come nigh our dwelling place. We thank you that every person connected to this assembly is covered by the covenant of your blood. And we thank you, Lord, that there is unity between heaven and earth, unity from brother to brother and sister to sister, heart to heart. I bless you for all that you're going to do in the days and the weeks to come. And I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.